Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. I hope my voice is coming good and clear to you. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's a wrong time to come at night uh, now. Uh, but uh, we will see. Let us invite more people so we can feel that we are here doing the right thing. And actually I noticed obviously that YouTube is doing something to our channel. Uh, you know, when I go live, before I finish, the view is like 6,000, 7,000, 12,000. And then after you finish, then the view appear in YouTube page 2,000, which is obviously something not right. Uh, but, you know, they try to, you know, like, uh, you know, to make you feel down, but that will not work, not with me. Anyway, today our topic is about why you should not learn Islam from Muslims. And as usual, because we don't want to make it like we are saying so, but we can prove so. My Skype will be open and I challenge any Muslim to prove me wrong. No one should learn Islam from Muslims. Only foolish people will learn Islam from Muslims. And I have a million reason to say so. Number one, Muslims are not forbidden to lie to you. For them, they consider lying to you in order to convert you to Islam is something good. This is a, they call it like a white lie. It's a good lie. This is not a bad lie. There is hundreds of videos made by Muslims bragging about how they converted someone to Islam because they lied to him. There is a video in Islamic TV. Maybe I can find it. I don't remember the name, but maybe we can search it. Uh, but this is an example, but this one translated to English. That's why I'm, I'll try to find it. <coughs> uh, about a Muslim, he have a neighbor who is a Jew. So the Jewish guy, you know, the Muslim, he keeps saying to him, why you don't convert to Islam? The Jewish guy, he, um, uh, like, finally, he said to him, you know what, I can convert to Islam, I have no problem. But uh, there is one problem that uh, I like to drink and I like to smoke. <clears throat> So, in Islam, you can smoke as much as you want, even hashish. But suppose to drink is not allowed. So, he told him, who told you that you cannot smoke and drink? The Jewish guy, he said, really? I can? He said, yeah. You can. Say shahada. So, then he say shahada. And he became a Muslim. And then the guy, he said, okay, well, you know, I'm a Muslim now, finally. Don't tell me anymore to convert to Islam. It looked like he is trying to make him leave him alone. Then the Muslim guy, he said, but now you cannot drink. He said, what do you mean? He said, you cannot drink. He said, uh, but you told me I can drink. He said, yeah, I told you just five minutes ago, at that time, you were not a Muslim. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find the video, actually. That's why my screen is off. Uh, <clears throat> I will try to search it in English. Maybe we can find it. Uh, anyway, I mean, there's tons of examples of how they... They are even proud about it, you know, like they are they are not shy or ashamed or say, yeah, because this is a, it's a it's a it's a good thing you do. You are not doing something bad. You are doing it to convert this person to Islam. And uh, obviously it work, you know, according to them. But there is there is a problems bigger than this. You know, first of all. 
there is official organization made sponsored by government like the government of Saudi Arabia the government uh, of uh, Emirat Bahrain Qatar they have a huge budget like in Christianity if we open a church you have to support it yourself you pay for electricity you pay for the building you pay for the land you pay for anything Muslims on the other hand even the, the mosque which are in USA in Europe they are a sponsor by a huge budget from Qatar, Bahrain, Emirates, Saudi Arabia. A lot of money. Building Islamic Center, even giving scholarships in order to fool people and convert them to Islam. But what is the way? If you open the Quran, any translation you wish, and you ask the Muslims which translation you approve, you will not find one Muslim says, I approve this translation. Why? Because they knew those translation is made only for the purpose of sales. As an example, chapter 3, verse number 161, it says, it is not for a prophet to take illegally a part of the booty. <laughs> so the Arabic word is yagul. Take it, the translated translation is what? Take illegally, why you don't say steal? They accuse him to be a thief. And then you open every translation. You will not one of them saying that this is, was an accusation for, for Muhammad by his companion that he is a, a thief. So what we do, we fabricate, we try to go around it. Take illegally. Let me see what translation is that? Who is the translator? This is Hilari and Khan. Let us see uh, uh, Itani. What Itani will say? This is a different translation. You know, we will see if uh, it is not for a prophet to act dishonestly. What? <laughs> there is no booty no more. <laughs> I mean, do you see? We just changed the translator, and the whole story is different now. What to act or dishonesty? What does that mean? <laughs> So here you ask yourself, okay, the translator who is translating, uh, is the purpose is to corrupt his book? There is no way a Muslim he would do that. Come on, the Muslim, they say we preserve the Quran. So what they are doing? What they are trying to do is not to deliver to you the, the true message in the Quran, so you will see that Muhammad and his companion, they are a bunch of thieves. They are fighting over a theft. As simple as that. The thieves, they go and they kill their neighbors. They stole, and it's a piece of a clothing. Imagine, all this is drama is about a piece of a clothing. The Muslim, they say to you that Muhammad, he been offered to be a king and he refused, which is very funny. If you, if you think about it, I mean, they offer him to be a king when he is already have a big army. What does that mean? This is silly, stupid. So he knew he's going to conquer all his neighbors soon. And he laugh at what they are offering him. And all the stories Muslim they provide you, 99% of it is a fabrication. Uh, the Hadith as an example. The Hadith is what Muhammad said or his companion did. Said or did? If you ask a Muslim, is the hadith trustworthy? Right away they will say it. There's a lot of garbage in the hadith. Okay. Can we follow Islam without the hadith? No, you cannot follow Islam without the hadith. So, how Islam is preserved? So, in one hand, they lie to you and they say Islam is the most preserved religion. You know, we have people who recite the Quran by heart, which is very stupid, by the way, because you will not find a person who converted to Islam in older age, like, you know, you are 18 or, seven, or even 16 or 17, reciting the Quran. Those who they are reciting the Quran, is they are kids being abused by beating them so they can keep repeating the Quran and memorize it. This is why you will never find like, you know, all those uh, famous uh, convert, 
ask any of them, do you know how to recite the Quran by heart? They don't know. They will never be able to do so. But when you are a kid, you, rem you remember even commercial, even a candy commercial from the time of your childhood. Because at that moment, your head is empty, your memory is so clean, and whatever. You know, they, they, they keep beating them, forcing them, punishing them to repeat and repeat and repeat until supposedly they, uh, they memorize. But the second you ask them a question about the Quran, they do not know what to answer. And the second we ask them why the translation is different from other translation, and why the meaning is so different. If we go as an example, just to show you. <coughs> if we go to chapter 86, I, actually I, I, I challenged a Muslim to show me one chapter, have a good translation. Have a translation the Muslims accept. If you go on this tra translation as an example, <coughs> uh, You read here by the sky at the Tariq. But what is the Tariq? Allah is wearing by something called a Tariq. Okay, but what is a Tariq? What do you know about the Tariq? The Tariq is a person star. What is that? No meaning. You ask every single sheikh in the world, what the heck is that? Is Allah mentioning to us something nobody knows? This is a name in Arabic for a star, and this exists. I mean, it's a star exists for I don't know how long, but the Arab they have a, they have a name for it. And Muhammad he came, his God told him, uh, uh, and the Tariq. Okay, what is that? And if you read the, the translation, it says, by the sky. And the Tariq. If you read the Arabic here, you will not find where it says by. Where is by? Any Muslim can show me the word by? No by. Wasama'u wa Tariq. Wa in Arabic mean and. Tariq. Wasama. Wa as sama, which means and the sky. Wa again is and. At Tariq. The sky and the tariq. Uh, what does that mean? So look at the translation here. By the sky and the tariq. So if you are a foreign person who do not speak the language, uh, you will take it. Let us change the translator. This is a Itani. Let us go to Hilali Khan. Look at this. By the heaven and a tariq. Where is the word by? We cannot find it in Arabic. So how they add it there? In Arabic it says wasama. The reason they do that because if they don't do that, the Quran sounds stupid. Because you know, in Arabic, same as in English, when you say and, and that's mean there is a sentence exists before it. Correct? It's it's, it's a conjunction. In, in English is not my first language, and my English is not that good. But I'm speaking based on the Arabic. However, I think even in English, you know, there is no way you will say and unless you said something before it. So, wa, the first letter is and. I will type the letter in Arabic and I change in a Muslim if he dare to say to me, I'm lying. Equal. To end, and you can open any you know Islamic website teaching Arabic, and you will see that. Okay, so the first letter in the in the sentence is wa. How that can work? And the sky. So what they do in order to cover up the stupidity of the Arabic of the Quran, they translated falsely the word, uh, uh, the letter wa as by.
Do you see it? Then if you ask yourself about even their translation, why in the world there is a God, he swear by stupid star? And what was the purpose? The sky and a tariq. And you will notice how they lie. Look with me, just to show you how we can get them busted. Do you see? This is wa, letter wa. And this is the letter wa here. Look, the second letter wa is translated in English as and. Do you see it? Good. This is what it means. And. But the first wa, they translated as by. So they try to make a sentence make sense by fabricating words is not there. How they get that? They will say to you in the tafsir, it says that Allah is a swearing. But where is where is the swear? Where is the swearing? And why Allah will swear anyway by a stupid star? The same thing appear in the chapter speaking about the figs, which is a fruit I like very much. Have you ever heard of God he swear by fig? Well, in Islam he does. Let us add wa. Wattin was zaytun. <laughs> in chapter 95 you will see the same stupid thing there is nowhere it is a swearing suddenly Allah said and Sinai and Sinai before it and the fig and the olive okay but does not make sense and the fig and the olive So now if I want to ask a Muslim, a Muhammadan, okay, you are the Muhammadan, I'm not. And supposedly you are the one who knows what that means. Who is a Muhammadan is willing to call us and tell us, what the heck is this? What does that mean? I'm going with your translation, which is a stupid translation, for, you know, far from, you know. In Arabic it says, and... The, the fig and the olive and the Mount of Sinai. And by the way, the Mount of Sinai is coming wrong. You know, it says Taurus we Fenin. We never heard of such a town. So Sinai, Sina in Arabic, became Sinin. Sinin in Arabic mean years. But here he add the word, see, like you read it, Sinin. Sinin. Nobody heard of such a word before. So Muhammad, he is trying to make a rab. Uh, if you notice, the last word here end with the letter N. So he had to find the word end with letter N. But Sina doesn't end with N, but we add N, who cares? <laughs> and then so now we need another word have the word letter letter n so what we do we, we are just making things up have no sense like somebody making rub but the rub is stupid if muhammad is out of, of word he will use the name of joe biden biden you know he will make it by dean and because he's very weak in Arabic, he could not even continue. So you will notice here the sentence after it. Suddenly, he jumped to a word end with letter M, close to a knee and N, but not the same M, M like mountain. And then he go back. Or There's nothing such a it's called asfalusafilin. So very stupid language have no meaning. What is the connection 
between the fig and the olive and Sinai and uh, uh, Mecca. I mean, we, we, we were here in the fig. Then we are now in the olive. And then we jump to the Mount of Sinai. And then we swear um, by Mecca. And uh, as you see here, they say by, but in Arabic it doesn't say by. It says, and this is the, and this is uh, the secure uh, town or land. If we change the translator just for, you know, just for fun. This is Muhammad Hilali and etc. Let us see Kattab. Let us see what Kattab will come. Look, look, see? Here, this guy, he, he did not say by. He said and. And. Only here he put by. Do you see that? Do you see the false translation? How in the world the letter wa here is and and the other translation is by? Let us go back to the previous translation just to remind you. Look by the Mount of Sinai, by the fig, the other translator, and the Mount of Sinai. But even here, still he say by. Why? Because they have to duct tape the stupidity of the Arabic. So, the Arabic of the Quran is very stupid and confusing. The Muslims do not know how to answer questions about the religion. They are allowed to lie to you, giving you false answers, have nothing to do really what Islam teach. In the top of that, even the one who claim that he have knowledge, he have none. As, a, as an example, there is a guy, his name is Sheikh Uthman. Sheikh Uthman. This guy, he claimed to be a sheikh, right? We hear every day, every day, the Muslims saying to us that uh, Muhammad was Abrahamic. Don't we? Every day. But listen. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. <laughs> Muhammad, he did not know even who is Gabriel, the angel, the most famous angel for the Jews and the Christians. He never heard of Gabriel. And now he is 40 years old. And he did not come from Abrahamic faith. Did you hear it? But how many articles, how many videos, how many speeches says that Muhammad came from Abrahamic faith? Hmm? How many? He did not come from Abrahamic faith. He did not even know what is Jibreel. So what Muhammad religion was? All of them, they lie to us and they say Muhammad was a person who worshipped the only true God all his life. But the fact, Muhammad never worshipped any true God and have nothing to do with the God of the Jews. And as you see, he never come from Abrahamic faith. The Muslim, the biggest lie they give us that Muhammad is from Ishmael. And by the way, this is a lie even repeated by Christian. How many of you heard Christian ministers in your churches saying to you, the Muslims are from Ishmael? How many times? Ignorant. I cannot describe them more. Ignorant become teachers. The Old Testament says that Ishmael, he married his mother, she married him to an Egyptian woman. So how Muhammad is from Ishmael? So the father is an Aramaic from Iraq. He's not an Arab, remember, those are not Arab. Iraq today is occupied by the Arab. So Abraham from Iraq, 
Aramaic, uh, Hajar, his wife, who was his maid, she is an Egyptian. Hajar, she took her son and she left the husband and she married her son to an Egyptian woman. So how in the world the Arab Aka Muhammad belong to Ishmael? Any of you ask his church minister where he got this from? Did you ask them just once? It's repeated almost in every church, which is absolutely false. Not because they are lying, but because they are ignorant. Do we have any Muslim? And then things get more complicated. If you ask a Muslim, <clears throat> does the Quran say, as an example, the sun set in murky water? The Muslims who claim that they don't corrupt their book, not only they add words, they are willing to add sentences in order to cover up the stupidity of the Quran. Let us see. Chapter 18 is one of the most funny, stupid chapters ever you can imagine. It's not even, it cannot be described that it's written by somebody who have a brain of a teenage. Teenage would never do that. When I say teenage, I mean somebody maybe 11, not even 12 or 13. Just a little kid. This is the most stupid ever. Look at this. So they ask Muhammad about Zulqurnayn. Then you ask yourself, who is the heck is this Zulqurnayn? I mean, what kind of book is saying to us? <laughs> they are asking you about Zulqurnayn. Don't he have a name? Who is this guy? Zulqurnayn in Arabic mean the one with the two horn. Zu here. Al Qurnain, two horn. Zu mean with the one who is with something, you know. The guy with the two horn, they are asking you about it. Allah now is telling Muhammad teaching him science. Okay, Allah, tell us what about the Qurnain. I will relate to you something of his narrative. This is the Muslim translation. Surely we established him in the land. So now Muhammad, he claimed that Alexander the Great, he was a Muslim. And Allah gave him victory. And we gave him the means of all things. True story. So he traveled of a course. Okay. I'm just reading their translation. I'm not making any, you know. Until he reached the sitting point. Look at this. Uh, do you see the bracket? Do you see the bracket? The sitting point. In the Quran, it says the sitting point. Of the sun. Here, you do not need to be genius to know that there is something wrong. Because what do you mean this guy he traveled? This guy he spent his life traveling. He did not go like one picnic night and then he ended the day by the sunset. So they are talking about a guy who end his journey in one direction. He reached a point. This is their translation, not mine. Where the sun set. So if we change the translator now, this is Khattab. We go to Hilali Khan. Let us see how the point will function now. Hilali and Muhammad Hilali and Muhammad Khan until when he reached the sitting place of the sun. 
Look, it was a point a second ago. Now he reached the setting place of the sun. That makes more sense. But it is bad for Islam. So this guy, he keep going, keep going, keep going. Until he found the setting place of the sun. He found it sitting in a spring of a black, muddy, hot water. Then now here, you stop and you say, oh, what the heck is that? So the Muslim now, they have a solution. When they explain this verse for you, they say, Allah is saying he found it as if it is sitting in black muddy water. And then you will see Zakarnaik saying, Brother Thittar, first of all, if you go to the ocean, you see in the ocean the tongue going in the ocean. But is it through the ocean that you know the tongue? But your eyes make you think that the tongue is going inside the ocean. And that's what the Quran is saying. That the Quran, he thought that the tongue sitting in the ocean. But you notice with me, there's no ocean. Ocean is a duct tape to blind people from the stupid fiction story in the Quran. It says here, a spring. There is no way that the spring become an ocean. A spring is not even a river. A spring is a just little tiny spot of water coming from the ground. That what is a spring is not going to be in the size in in uh, even uh, I mean you can go all of you you know what spring is spring of water so it's a spring it's a black it's muddy it is boiling so their interpretation for the verse which is the duct tape is trying to cover a stupid fiction story was very well known before Muhammad that he found where the sun get hit its heat from the sun goes every day and shower itself in that hot boiling water and come back again and here it says <coughs> if we go now uh, who is the one can explain what this verse the Muslim they volunteer from around the world to explain it to you but none of them is honest to tell you that this is what it's meant. If we go to the hadith, we will find Muhammad is getting them all busted. Muhammad explained the verse. And this is a sahih hadith. I was sitting, again hadith mean what Muhammad said or his companions. I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. I ask him, he asked, sorry, do you know where this set, speaking of the sun? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said it's set in a spring of hot water. Hamia is not warm. Hamia is a very extremely, not, you see, if we go actually in the Quran, just to show you what Hamia mean, you see it here in, our, in, 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 in like English letters, Hamia. Huh? If we go in the Quran, I will type the word Hamia, just to show you how they lie when they say even warm. This is Hamia, chapter 88, verse number 4, chapter 101, verse number 11, it's about hellfire. This is how, this is not warm. This is Hamia, do you see it? So how Hamia in translation became warm water? They are trying to duct tape again. So Allah, he is telling us the story of Zul Qurnayn and he He knows best that Zul Qurnayn, he found where the sun set, he, he went in a long journey which is very normal to do. I mean, Zul Qurnayn, he used to go picnic every day. He spent his life, uh, you know, looking for the, where the sun set. And he found where the sun set. So, any Muslim have little dignity, right away he have to admit, well, this is what the Quran is saying. It's obvious. And then they try to fix it more. They say, okay, like there is, a, there is a Abdul, he says, it says here he found, yeah, but found actually the same word 
uh, exist in the same chapter, he found the wall as if it is going to collapse. So he, he supposed he's smart. So he said, the found here is not about, uh, uh, like, it's really a true find. It says, as if it's going to collapse, my friend. He found the wall. The wall is what he found. As it's going to, going to collapse is, is the situation or the, 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 the details about the wall. So he found it. He did not thought he did not think he found it sitting in a spring of boiling water muddy boiling water and to make it more horrible he found near it near what near the spring so how this is just uh, as if as etc he found near it what he found near it people. So the spring is a real found. It's a it's a boiling, blazing fire spring. The sun set there, and next to it there is people who live there. So if you are a person who is trying to learn about Islam and you ask a Muslim to explain this verse, are you going to find one Muslim really have decency to say? This is what it says. As you see, we showed you what Muhammad said about it. Uh, is Muhammad lying about what the verse mean? If they want to say this is the Eve or all the garbage, as you see, it's not. In fact, Sunan Abi Dawood is one of the authentic, the six authentic books of Sahih, of, uh, of, uh, of Hadith. And as you see, it says Sahih in chain. There's no problem with it. Everything is perfect. But the second you ask a Muslim about it, there is a million videos in YouTube. Mimi, Hijab, Susu, Dudu, all, all, the, all the kids. They explain to you, they say, he's not saying the sun sitting there. They are saying that he thought, he thought, brother. But if you read it up, down, left, right, where is the word thought? He is, the one is talking now is Allah. Don't Allah knew how to add the word thought? He is not saying he thought, he says, until he reached the sitting place of the sun. So the one is telling us now is Allah. The guy is not talking. And he telling us until where he arrived, where were the sun set? It's a certain place of the sun. But all of us, we knew that the sun set everywhere. What certain place of the sun? I do not need to move from my chair to witness where the sun set. What the Muhammadan they say to you, Oh, they mean when when the sun set time, he arrived to this place. Read carefully. This is his life story. It can't be just about he arrived to the sunset. The man, he just went what? He went from Thessaloniki. I mean, like in the old days, in order to go uh, uh, from country to country, it, it take you 30, 40 days, especially this guy is moving with his, with his army. Not just a person with his horse. They have equipment. They have, you know, soldiers, etc. So he keep going, keep going, keep going until this is the point of a king, where he arrived and he found a discovery. As you see here, the verse before it says, "Verily we establish to him, establish him in the earth." So we are talking about the person Allah claimed that he occupied the whole earth. So the point he is walking in that direction is to the end of the earth. Are, are you following with me? He is, he, uh, Allah he established for him in the earth, not in his country, not in his town, in the earth. He kept going, and we gave him the mean of everything, power, army, money, everything. So he fell away until, so he kept going in that way until he found where the sun set. Do we have any Muhammadan have obje objection? 
So now, if I ask a Muslim about this, I assure you, one billion percent, you will not find one Muslim have decency to tell you, well, yeah, this is what it says. And in fact, it's, I mean, how we can even hide it? It's in front of us. This is what it says. And then, uh, if you read the story, continue, just to show you that this guy supposedly, based on the story, he reached the two edges of the world, where the sun set and where the sun rise. So Muhammad is doing bigger poo-poo. So now, here in verse number 86, until he reached the sitting place of the sun, but then the guy, he changed his direction. As you see here, then he followed other way. So the Quran reports for us what happened there. Suddenly this guy is a Muslim doing jihad and the people, uh, Allah, you know, uh, he asked Allah what I will do with those people, punish them or reward them, which is very funny. Reward them. I mean, why you want to punish somebody? Suppose you want to reward. I mean, you cannot, re you cannot reward somebody he deserves to be punished and you cannot uh, punish somebody who deserves to be reward. Very stupid statement. Shall we punish them? You know? Okay. Uh, and then he follow other direction, another way. And now we will go to where the sun rises. Read with me carefully, just to show you that what the Quran is trying to say us, to us, that this guy, he reached all the earth to the e two edges, the east and the west, until he come to the rising place of the sun. Do you see it? So now the story is, is clear. Muhammad, he claimed that this person, he visited the two sides of the earth, the two edges, where the sun set and where the sun rise. Again, he found the sun where? Rising on people. So he, he, he found what? He found the rising place of the sun. What the Muhammad and they will say to you? Uh, he thought the sun rising, what? The one is talking is Allah. Is not the guy. Remember, Allah told Muhammad supposedly, they are asking you about Zul Qurnayn. I'm going to tell you about him. All right? <laughs> so in his journey, he found where the sun set. He found it sitting in a spring of muddy water. And then he continued his journey. And then he reached all the way to the place where the sun rises. So he reached the two sides of the earth. And then there's a bigger poopoo -poo here is about a building a dam for what is called Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog, the land of Gog and Magog is mentioned in the Bible. But there is many legends and fiction stories about Gog and Magog. Muhammad, because he's very famous with capturing legend and putting them in the Quran, all of this is something he heard, he put it in the Quran. Suddenly Muhammad, he decided to add some spies to the story. So he said, uh, he he arrived when he arrived where the sun rise as you see here the rising place of the sun he found it rising on people have you ever heard of such a stupid language I found the sun rising in a bunch of American <laughs> I went to Canada and I found the sun rising on the Canadian I went to Singapore and I found the sun rise on the Singaporean I want to India and I, what, is it, what the heck is that? So here he is making a supposedly more specific. This is where the sun rise. This is not any place. This is where the sun rise from. This is not about the sun rising on. This is where, this is, as you see, this is this, the, the Muslim stupid translation. This is where the sun rise. This is not just the sun rise on the Pakistani or Indonesian or uh, Iraqi or American, no. This is the rising place of the sun. And, and he found near it. He found what? He found near that place. P 
people or the sun rising on them who had no shelter actually I saw one of the Muslim claim about this they claim this is about the ozone hole in the South Pole <laughs> Actually, I think they said the North Pole. Imagine, stupid story. Suddenly, it's about the ozone for Muslims, just to cover it. The ozone hole in the sky, it says there's no cover on them, brother. What Muhammad is trying to say, that this guy, he went uh, to a place where those people, they don't have houses. They live in the wild. They don't have shelter. The Muslim they make it the ozone look like the ozone was a problem from the time of uh, Zulqarnain people they smoke at that time a lot man and they have cars and the ozone was like you know ozone big problem big problem so <laughs> so he found that those people who the Sun rise on them have no shelter against the Sun so which mean the Sun is there all the time because this is where the Sun rise and they are always under the sun. And then the comedy continue. And so, and we know all about him. Look, Allah now is telling him, see, I know everything about him. <laughs> I mean, imagine God, he is telling me, like, I know, I told you, I know everything. You know the thing, you know? I mean, have you ever heard of a silly God, he speak in such a way? Okay, so now I told you, okay, I know. I'm a lie, I know everything. Mm. I told you all the news about him. What do you want more? What do you want? And then he continued, he says, and then he followed another way. What? He just went to that direction? Yes, because he had to cover all directions. This is the whole journey. This is the life journey of, of Zulqarnain, Alexander the Great. So then he followed another way until, look carefully, until when he reached between two mountains. He found, uh, this is the Muslim translation, not mine, before, between two brackets, near them, between two brackets, those two mountains, a people, a people, uh, because the Quran did not say, which people? It says, common. You know, a people, who scarcely understand the word, understood the word. So those people, they don't understand the word. They are so stupid. Donkeys. Literally, donkeys. They, don't, they don't even understand the word. But here you see how Muhammad stupidity go beyond imagination. Take a note. They hardly can understand the word, right? I'm not the one who said that. The Quran saying that. So, and then they said, O Zulqarnayn, Verily, Jews and Jews are a great mischief. Like what? I, I thought they don't understand the word. Have you ever heard of a stupid story like this? A second ago, you said to me, they hardly can understand the word. And then, just the line after it, they are wise philosophers, smart intelligent they are even asking Zulqarnayn to build a dam for them do you see it so those who don't understand the word suddenly they become the most wise and they are telling the prophet of Allah what to do not Allah telling him what to do and here you need to notice something very stupid because according to Islam, this dam which is built by Zulqarnayn is exist until now and Gog and Magog, they cannot get out because each time they dig on that dam, which is funny, made from iron and copper. Each time they dig in it, when the night come, they forgot to say inshallah tomorrow, which means God is willing. We will come back tomorrow. So Allah clears the hole, close it. They come second day, they found the hole close again. So they dig, they keep digging all until one day, their boss, he says, 
tomorrow Allah is willing we are going to continue he, they come now because he said Allah is willing look I thought Zulkarnain are evil are people of mischief and I mean do you see how stupid the story how they are people of mischief and they are ugly evil and they are disbelievers and then in the story of Muhammad they will say inshallah tomorrow we are going to come back and continue so the people of Muhammad continue suddenly those people who they are stupid uh, who do not understand the word they are engineered they are engineers they can tell you what to do how to build the dam and then Zulqarnain, he listened to them. He said, okay, let us build it. So he said, and look now at the material he built the dam. Muhammad, he chosen a dam which nobody can go through. It's made from iron, brother. I mean, think about it. It's made from what? From iron. Guys, focus with me, focus with me. I see somebody just want to pray for me. My friend, thank you for your prayer. You know, you see me asking you for a prayer. Thank you very much. You can pray in your heart. Don't make a drama about it. Don't worry about me. All right? Focus with me on the topic. Do you see me complaining? Do you see me asking you to pray for me? Don't worry. So, Zulkarnain, he said to them, Okay, okay. <clears throat> And here you see the first translation again. It says, give me pieces, block of Aaron. But the Muslim here, they put it between two bracket, little bracket, which is weird. But in Arabic, it says, Atuni, al Hadid. They bring me the, uh, 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 the fine uh, iron. And let us make like blocks, like concrete from iron. And then, after we make those blocks, we are going to add copper on it, Milton Cooper. I mean, look at this engineering. And supposedly, Muhammad, he chosen a material which is, makes sense that is going to stay forever until Allah allowed them to go through the dam. But all of us, we knew that iron will rust so fast so there is no dam in the world except in the dam mind can survive maximum maximum maybe 50 years actually there's a big drama in the muslim world about this story and many many muslims leave islam because of it if you remember there is a <clears throat> A guy, his name is Yasser Kadhi. He claimed to be a scholar, but he is a potato. He made videos about the story, and the video was very embarrassing. And then suddenly, Every Muslim is feeling get hurt. Refutation to Yasser Kadhi. <sighs> Refutation. They are refuting him. The guy he said to them, if you believe that there is an iron dam, can it stay all those thousands of years? You believe? I am an engineer. I can't believe in that. They got so angry. Refutation. And Muslims, one after one, they are trying to refute. Look, this is Lili Dawa, our sister Lili Dawa, reacting to Yasser Kadhi, Ya Juju, Wa Ma'juj. And then, look, look at the title here. Is ya go, ya Gog and Magog a robot? <laughs> this guy is so more upset. Eesh, man, this guy want to eat Yasser Kadhi alive. Look what he said. Where did Yasser Kadhi doubt about the Quran come from? I mean, isn't it enough to see how stupid this story? So this guy is their sheikh. He was glorified by them for a century. Suddenly when he started making those statements, 
the Muslims want to eat him alive. Why ya Sarkadi is wrong? Oof, 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 oof. Suddenly, everybody want to refute ya Sarkadi, but nobody can explain to us why he's wrong. Any Muslim can call us and tell us why this guy is wrong. Refuting the refutation. Look, I like it, you know. Refuting the refutation. Those things can happen only in Islam, my friend. Refuting the refutation. Zakir Naik, totally wrong. Totally wrong. He's totally wrong. Even some Muslim, they put X on him. Yasser Kadi, the misguided caller to hellfire exposed in 11 minutes. That's deep. All of them, they ignore one fact that this guy is just asking a question and none of them can answer it. Who in the world want to believe that there is somebody built a dam made of iron and this dam cannot be found anywhere and until now it exists and behind it there is seven trillion, not billion, because according to Muhammad, every human, from every human, there is equal number of 1,000 of Gog and Magog. So if we are seven or eight billions, they are eight trillion. All of them, they are behind the dam. And you know, the, the funny is, if you go back to the Quran, just to show you how stupid Muhammad is. So now if we build a dam between us, let us say Putin. I mean, how you can stop Putin from coming to you? I mean, there's two mountains. Hey, hold on, hold on. I want to I wanna show you how stupid the story is. Because some people, you know, they don't they don't have the good imaginary to see the stupidity. We build a mountain, we build a dam between two mountains, and those people and now they cannot come to us unless they go through the wall. Hmm. True story. All right, I'm looking for a picture. I have two mountains. Let us see if we can find a picture we can use. What a stupid religion. I mean, this is not even good for kids. Come on, we need two mountains. I see pictures. Oh, okay, I found two mountains, finally. All right. Let me wait for you on the screen. <clears throat> and I chosen like a very high mountains. A beach? Okay. So now we have two mountains. And in the story, there's no water. Here there's a water. Forget about the water. So... We build, we are going to build a dam here between us and between Gog and Magog. And you know what? We will build it all the way up, like all the way up to the top of the mountain. High, very high. All right. Who is the stupid in the world when I believe that those people, they cannot go around the mountain or even climb the mountain? Remember, they are in the earth. And we build a mountain between us and them. And now, supposedly, those people, they cannot come to us because they are behind the wall. <laughs> and remember, this is God's story. This is who? This is God talking brother this is not a joke this is God God brother we build a wall and now they are behind the wall 
And like, look, I, I can see one of Gog and Magog, he's dying. Hey, CP, CP, open the door for us, man. Please, we want to go and attack Mecca, please. Uh, uh, hold on. Why why your voice like Lady Dawa? Uh, my voice is not like Lady Dawa. Well, your voice is like Lady Dawa. Uh, okay, hold on. Lady Dawa, he speaks like this. Brothers and sisters, why in the world we need to answer the question about Gog and Magog? First of all, honey, can you give me some grape? Some grape. So, first of all, those questions will lead you out of Iman, brother. So we should not answer those questions. Allah, he say what he say. The Prophet, he say what he say. We just obey. Where is the grape? No, not this grape. The other grape. This is not the grape. You are stupid. This is fig. Did it look the same? Okay, let me... Oh, mm, mm, mm. So we build a wall and now those creatures cannot come to us and they are behind the wall. And then they say to you, Islam is a, a religion and true stories and you know, what the, what the heck? And then, and then Zach and Nick, you know, he like, he, he get you the refutation. But the Thetar, first of all, people of Gog and Gogog, maybe the satellite cannot find him. Maybe not the graphic cannot find him. Maybe scientists cannot find him. But trust me, they are there. Uh, uh, hold on, the Quran and Yuka. Uh, they are there where? I mean, they are in the earth behind the wall. Where is that wall and how come until now we cannot find it? Christian Prince, first of all, the wall is so high and this is why we cannot see them. But, but, but we can climb. We, we have uh, airplanes, we have satellite, we have Christian Prince. First of all, NASA, they found the wall. And they are hiding it because they don't want people to see the truth. Who? Nata. What? Who? Listen, Prince. First of all, your English is very funny. I need to speak English. Let me teach you English. Nata. Nasa, I mean. Listen carefully. It is Nata. Okay. I forgot you have a broken teeth. Since last time we have boxing match. Listen, Prince. First of all, I don't play boxing. I play karate. And Bruce Lee, he died because of me. Uh, yeah, I heard. Bruce Lee, he died because he watched a movie you made on the stage. He died laughing. <laughs> they took him with heart attack and he died. First of all, this is absolutely rumored and not true. For me, there is nobody can laugh at me. And the story in the Quran is a true story. Okay. It's NASA, brother. NASA, NASA. Do we have any Muslim can tell us what's happening? So when you ask a Muslim, this is why you cannot learn Islam from Muslim. Muslim themselves, they don't know what to answer about their religion. So what they do, they try to duct tape. Who in the world want to believe in such a garbage story? That there is a wall, we build it between us and them, and then they will keep digging and enter one day. Their boss, he will say, inshallah, tomorrow we will come and we will continue digging. Now because he said, inshallah, the hole will open, which means when they dig, Allah will not close it. Do we have any Muslim have a comment? After we finish our broadcast for today, you will find the Muslim have only one comment they post after all the garbage we showed them. Christian Prince, he worshiped three gods. If we go and read more about what Muhammad, you see the, the nice thing about Muhammad, he is a kind of a person he cannot keep his mouth shut. He like he's a poopoo -poo machine. This is why Erdogan he made a big conference in uh, Ankara, trying to delete thousands and thousands of Muhammad statement because they are very embarrassing. The Prophet said, Allah has made an opening in the wall of Gog and Magog. Read carefully with me. Who is the one who made the hole? Allah. Who is the one who made the wall? Zulqurnayn. When the hole is opened in the time of Muhammad. So Muhammad, the false prophet, prophesying that they are coming now. 
the hole is open. Are you with me? This is a statement he mentioned 14, 1500 years ago. Today, the wall, the barrier of Gog and Magog has been opened so much. Well, most Muslims, is that true or it's a lie? So are they still behind the wall? And if Allah is the one who opened it, that's mean nobody can fix it. Allah opened it. And Muhammad was terrified. Even Muhammad he was making the shape of this hole, how it looked like. And then one of the Muhammad and they said to him, "Are we going to be get killed by them?" Oh, Messenger of Allah, shall we perish while still there is will be righteous people among us? Because supposedly, this is the end of the time where those Gog and Magog they will come and they will slaughter start slaughtering everybody. So the Muhammad and he said to him, "Oh, they are coming out. Are, are, are we going to perish, Prophet? Are we going to be killed soon?" But didn't you say, supposedly, if there is some righteous, that will not happen yet? And the story continued. And then Muhammad, he claimed that the Muslims, they will fight with the people of Gog and Magog, who they are not really human. In fact, the Muslim, they believe that the Turkish are one of the 22 tribes of Gog and Magog. And the reason the Turkish, they were not behind the wall because they were going in a hunting trip when Zulkarnain, he built the wall, which is true. Erdogan, he was going in a hunting trip looking to steal some money from Armenia. Muhammad, he claimed that when Gog and Magog, they come out of their dam, they will use their arrows which is made from wood and bows which is made from wood and shield which is made from wood and the Muslim will light fire for a fuel from those Gog and Magog for seven years suppose this is a lot of firewood you know You can read endless numbers of stories made by Muhammad. All of them, they are stupid, hilarious, dummy. It show you one simple thing. You cannot learn Islam from Muslims because what the Muslim, the first thing the Muslim they will do, they will hide those stories from you. And they will try their best to give you an answer, have nothing to do with the answer. Do we have any Muslim have an objection? Anyone? And look here, Muhammad, he claimed that Gog and Magog, they will attack the Arab. Read carefully. Muhammad, he woke up from his sleep. This is the name of the chapter. And look, look at the, uh, look at the, the book name. The book of Terpelutation. So this is what what this is about the judgment day. So Muhammad was predicting that hour is coming now. He come from his sleep and he says there is no being worthy of worship expect Allah. There is destruction in store for Arabia because of a turmoil which is at is at hand. The barrier now this happening now. The barrier of Gog and Magog has opened so much. And Sufyan made a sign of 10 with the help of his hand to show you how big. And look at the first translation, by the way. In the, in the translation, say here, for Arabia, 
in Arabic it says Wailun lil Arab, a we to the Arab, not to the Arabia, not to Arabia, to the Arab. So Muhammad he claimed that now it's happening, and Gog and Magog they are coming out from their behind their dam, and they are going to attack the Arab specifically, and not only that, the Arab will suffer horribly. And this is a sign of the day of judgment. It's not me who's saying that. Read the name of the chapter, read the name of the book. So this is listed as one of the signs of the day of judgment. And until now, we have zero Muslim trying to say to us anything. And if we ask a Muslim about those stories, he will do his best to hide the truth from you. Anyone have a question? It's very funny, we changed the account. We just changed the account and people do not know how to find us. And the funny is, what make it more funny, that we have in every video, the address of patreon.com slash Christian Prince. And still people, they ask, where we can find you, Christian Prince? My friend, we can lose this channel anytime. You have an address, patreon.com slash Christian Prince. Go there, don't even make a donation. It's for free. Everything I do is for free. Everything I do is for free. Don't think it's a donation website. You have to make a donation. No. All my videos are publicly, publicly published. I don't make a membership like you have to pay in order to watch. I don't do that. We are not doing business here. So always when you do not know how to find which channel I am in, go to Patreon. See the last video is showed there. You will see, click in it, you will find how to go to me. Very simple. This uh, because people don't uh, donate. This is why we have a big number of uh, of. Uh, I mean, we have a thousand something uh, subscribers, but how many of them they donate? Very tiny number. Here we go. I just want to just to be sure. Here we go. This is the video I just posted in your in Patreon. You click on it. You don't need to make a, a account, anything. This is Patreon. If you go to every pages in Patreon, you will see people, they will not allow you to watch their video unless you make a donation. You pay. I don't do that. You make donation. You don't make donation. It is for free. So this is the last video I posted, which is now. The one we are doing right now is there. You will be always updated. All we need to do you click at the last post I just did and you will know where I am going to be. Very simple. All right. <clears throat> you will see all my videos. You do not need even to log in. You do not need to, you know. Yeah. Just do it. Remember that anytime. Because we might lose an account in YouTube anytime. Who care about the account? You know, we care what we are going to learn and who is the one is talking. Is Muhammad from the tribes of Gog and Magog? There is no such a thing, my friend. What tribe of Gog and Magog? In fact, nobody knows who is Muhammad's father. Therefore, we do not know he is from which tribe, really. That's why there's a hadith says that Muhammad is the same as a tree and a lonely tree in the desert which means he have nobody knows who is his father did you ask yourself why even his family they send him to a bedouin woman in the middle of the desert to nurse him why his family he have a big family supposedly why they don't want to nurse him many women you throw away your kid only if you if this is not your kid Do we have any question? All right. 
Well, look like we are done for today, and I hope we learned something new. And uh, you notice when we read, I, I wish that all people, they will learn how to read. You know, most of us, we read, but we don't focus carefully in, in, in a story we read. We just read words and we let, let it go. That is a wrong way of reading. You want to learn, you want to educate yourself, think about what you are reading. Try to connect the story together. Especially if you are reading a book supposedly is about religion, about God. He was unwanted because he saw Satan in him. You know, we don't want to bash the guy. I mean, they don't want him because simply he is not their family. The guy was a kid. What's Satan on him? We don't want to go now. We do the same as the Muslim make fictions about the guy. He was a kid. Uh, you know, I believe Muhammad is mentally ill. Maybe he is, uh, uh, you know, possessed. But we don't want to make uh, uh, stories. Is not there. Usually, when the family, especially those are Bedouin, you know, they live in the desert. They don't throw their kids in the, they give it to someone stranger to, to nurse him. They have, you don't even need to nurse him by a woman. You can give him milk of the of the camel. What nursing him? You know? So it doesn't make sense. What it makes sense, based in many references, that Muhammad is not a child of this family. Even Muslim books say that Muhammad was born six years after his father's death. Some they say four years, some they say six years. So the man, the man, he passed away, and then four years, five years, six years after, the wife she gave birth. And the Muslim, they try to fix it. They say there's a mistake in our books. This is not really what happened. Anyway, whoever he is, he is an evil man, and we are here exposing his lies. As simple as that. Who his father, who is not his father, who care? You know, knowing his father will not even fix the problem. The problem is that people are ignorant, illiterate, dummy, and Muslims, they deceive very easy. Many dummies around us. If you go right now and search for scientific miracle of the Quran, you will find endless numbers of videos. And trust me, there's a lot of, you know, creatures who believe anything? Anything, anything. You know, you have to give them. I mean, if you watch the news, you will see how stupid people are. You know, Google always recommend the news for me. And then, like, uh, there is a re the, the, uh, what? Uh, the performance of Rihanna's. I don't know who is Rihanna. I mean, it's all over in front of my place. Who cares for such a stupid thing? But because this is the interest of people. Super Bowl, Rihanna's, who is Rihanna's? Uh, uh, you know, uh, the women showing her, uh, look, this is a post I made in Patreon just uh, two days ago. Golf influencer, I mean, look at the news. I mean, this is news. Golf, this is Fox News. Golf influencer, Paige, I'm not sure if I'm saying the word, uh, I don't even know how to read it. Experience post tip video in low cut shirt. What? This is news. But this is telling you what time we are in and how low people they become. How stupid they are. This is news you want to hear. I mean, who care for such a thing? Are you serious that she posted a video in low cut shirt? I mean, I mean, we are in the time where people are walking almost naked in the street. And what is the news? She, she what? And this is one of the biggest agencies of news in USA. So 
if you have people who they are willing to listen to such a crap or such, such or this is so called news i mean they will listen to anything drugs marijuana people driving in the highway they take everybody in their way everybody is high i mean even joe biden became president Even, yeah, somebody mentioned the name of Andrew Tate. Even Andrew Tate, he have university. The guy who don't have high school, he have university, and people that register in it and they pay money. <laughs> a pimp. A pimp is teaching your kids. And they call him influencer. I mean, if a, if a pimp is an influencer, a pimp, literally, even himself, he called himself a pimp. This is how stupid the time we are in. And this is why, you know, who want to watch our videos? Eh, a few people. People want to watch people dancing, you know, singing, stupid stuff. And nobody want to see something serious because seriously, you get hurt. Your brain will get hurt. So you avoid something serious to drug your brain and imagine yourself that you don't live in the world. And this is why they are fighting to legalize marijuana, all kind of crazy stuff. I mean, everything everything is legal except what it should, should be legal. <coughs> and Islam is another form of marijuana and drugs, hashish. As simple as that. It's just a different name for the same material. It destroy your brain. It destroy your ethnic. Destroy, and I say ethnic, not only ethnic, ethnic. Because you see, Islam is a white supremacist Arab cult. So the Arabism will take over your culture. You are an African, you have to dress like the Arab. You have to call your name, change your name to Arabic. Even your food, even your words. Even your culture, you forget about everything have to do with you. You know, when the Muslim Brotherhood took over Egypt, they were planning in the coming maximum three years, they will destroy all and everything in the museum and all the ancient buildings of Egypt because it's against Allah. So they occupy the country, they destroy the country, and now they want to destroy the history of the country. And the reason is Islam. And this is what they did. If you remember when they destroy the, the statues of Buddha, 2,000 years old statues in Afghanistan. This is what the savage Islam does. It hijack your... It, they hijack everything. Even those stories which we are laughing at, those are stories that exist before Islam. Muhammad, he hijacked them. Not only they hijack airplane, they hijack your mind, your culture, your ethnic, and they control you. The purpose of Islam is control. It's a government control. A satanic government. In the appearance, it sounds fine. I mean, this religion will forbid uh, even drinking. Sound good. And But they allow you to have sex with the children. They allow you to kill your neighbors if you're not a Muslim. They allow you to lie. They, it's okay to lie to your wife, a wife lying to her husband. So in the appearance, Muslim or Islam trying to present to himself as a religion, teach good ethnic, or sorry, ethic. But in reality, what they are teaching is far away from ethic. As an example, Muhammad, he claimed, that when Allah, he created the black, he created them to go to hell. And when he created the white, he created them to go to heaven. We don't hear Muslims saying that. You will never find one Muslim Quoting for you such a thing. 
Why? Why they don't want to show you? Why they don't want to? This is why I say you cannot. You 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 see a Muslim talking to somebody, a black American or African or whatever. What he will say to him? Look what the white did to you, brother. Look what the European did to you. In fact, all the African slaves came to any country in Europe or USA. They've been captured, sold by the white Arab Muslims, specifically in Morocco and Tunisia and Libya. Go and read history. It's not the white who go to Europe and capture the black. It was the Arab Muslims. The biggest market of slavery was in the world was in Morocco. And right now is Mauritania. There's more than 10,000 black slaves right now in Libya. And this hadith in the front of you. When the last time you heard a Muslim mentioning this to you? They will never. And this is a Sahih Hadith. Look, it says Sahih. Even the Isnad is good. Sahih. Authentic. So they try to fool you. If you are black, they speak to you in a different way. I saw a video of a Muslim guy. He says he was in a in the city hall. He said in this house, the founder of this house used to own slaves. He's a Muslim. Look who's talking. How many slaves your prophet he have? Even the Quran teach you to rape your slaves, even if they have husbands. And because today we are in the time of everything is perfectly correct, you will see leaders around the world praising Islam, which is adding more deception to the deception. So I hope today we have we had learned something useful, and I hope people are taking notes. And uh, tell your friends that we are here. And remember again, the easiest way to find our channel wherever we go is to go to Patreon. It's for free. You do not need to make an account. You do not need to make a donation. It's for free. Totally for free. Trust me. Click at the last post and you will know where to find me. All right? So I want to say thank you for being here, and I hope soon we will be back live on air again, God is willing. And remember, we are here to save the Muslims. They are deceived, and many of them, they've been fooled, fooled by a foolish man. His name is Muhammad. He is foolish, yes, but he was evil to the bones. He is foolish, and we can prove it easy. The Quran is approving that. Every single verse in the Quran proving that this is a book written, made by a very foolish, ignorant, stupid man. So when the Muslim, they call their prophet illiterate, I agree. In Arabic, actually, it says Al-Ummi. Al-Ummi not only present, present uh, illiterate, it presents somebody is a, is a kafir, is an infidel. Ummi is equal to somebody he is not following the true teaching of God. Like one in Hebrew, you say the Gomai, which is the infidels. So you notice the Quran called the Christians and the Jews people of the book. But Muslims never been called people of the book. Why? Because they never had one. We are the one called the people of the book. And only us are people of the book. And even the, 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 the book of the devil, the Quran, witness that there is no other people can be called. People of the book except us. All those verses in front of you. All over the Quran. People of the book. As you see, 
we can click at any one of them and we can read it says people of the book people of the book people of the book and then the muslim they say to you you don't have a book that is showing you how they are disconnected even from their stupid book and muhammad he always wanted to put terror in the heart of the the, the, the people of the book He wanted to kill them. He wanted to finish them all. But what's happening now is the opposite. Islam is dying. Just two days ago, we have a Muslim, he called me. His name is Assassin Prince. And he called his name or his nickname and his channel because he want to assassinate me by refutation, not violently. He make the whole channel just to refute me. And then he left Islam. Just watch it. Two days ago. So Islam is dying. As soon as the internet came, now we can go to Saudi Arabia and they cannot block us. We can be heard in all Islamic countries. Even though I keep receiving, you know, uh, 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 like email from YouTube saying, Pakistan, they ban you. This country ban you. Because they are stupid. You ban my channel, but my videos in all over YouTube. Imagine this is how terrified they are. They have department of intelligence just to watch our videos. This is Pakistan who have nukes. They are afraid of my videos or your video. If you expose and spank the butt of Muhammad. But they will never stop us and they cannot stop us. For God is with me and then who could be against me so remember that take notes educate yourself download the video take reference save, save reference time will come and you never know you might need them muslims are all over trying to deceive your children your son one day might come to you and say i want to become a muslim He's a teenage. It happened. Many actually called me and please help me, my son, my daughter. And then after we speak to them, we notice how what's happening. But why you want to wait until it's too late? And thank God I never spoke to one. He did not change his mind. But there's many kids. They've been fooled. So do you want to lose your children's? Do you know what happened to this poor kid in Australia? He suddenly disappeared. They found him later in a video in Afghanistan committing suicide. Bombing. They took your kid from Australia. And imagine how powerful they are. They smuggle a human being from Australia all the way to Afghanistan. This is how organized crimes they have behind them. Crossing the borders of Australia smuggling a kid is 16 years old going through many countries and ending where in afghanistan and that can happen to you so don't think don't just laugh teach your children so they will not be the coming victim if you think it might never happen to you you are mistaken Young age, young kids, they are easy to fool. This is why you have to choose carefully. Even you, as an adult, your friends have a huge impact on you. If you associate yourself with a bunch of a drug dealer, you will end taking drugs. If you associate yourself with pimps, you will end to be a pimp or one of his customers in the best scenario. You have always to protect yourself by being vigilant, educated, smart, aware of things around you. When your children, they go to school, who is their friends? They are talking to who? Their phones. Don't just give a stupid phone to a child. Do you know what is inside this phone? What he is seeing? Are you in control of it? Many stupid parents, they just buy a phone to their kid. 
they have no idea what is there. You go to what is called the TikTok. Disgusting. YouTube is not better. If you go in YouTube now and you search for things, I mean, you will see crazy stuff. And the funny is, YouTube defined my videos against their guideline. But naked women, sex videos is not against their guideline. Because everything is awkward. So if you have a children, you have to be careful. Watch over them. If you have, if you give them a phone because of necessity, there's many ways to lock the phone so they cannot install apps. They cannot add apps. And always, even if you do that, you have to check the phone from time to time to be sure that not somebody told them maybe a trick so they can add an app to the phone. Many children, they will go victims do you see what's happening now in Turkey? There's hundreds of Syrian children who they are victims of the earthquake are missing. Not because of the earthquake, no, they kidnapped them from the hospitals. The market of slavery never died. One of you asked me if we should donate to victims. I'm not against donation to anyone who need help. But in those countries, my friend, your money will go to the pocket of the rich. Those who need the donation, they will never have it. Same time, I know that in Turkey, they are praying for our death every day. A week before the earthquake, Erdogan was speaking about shaking the ground of Athena in Greece with his missiles a week before I saw a dream before about a big earthquake in Turkey and many of you contacted me you said they said that the my, my dream come true the vision I saw I believe that this is not what I saw the earthquake is going to happen the one I saw I believe is going to be way more massive scary Something never happened before. I hope my dream was false. But those countries are doomed. Totally doomed. And nothing can rebuild them. What about porn site? Well, you have to stop, uh, you know, you can know in the in the phone, I think you have control uh, over browsers. I think there's trick, you know, for me, I don't have kids, so I don't really, I don't search how to do those things. But I'm sure you can control the phone to prevent your children from uh, visiting su such a place. I think you can do it, you know. And, you know, even if you give your son a phone so you can call him, maybe you can disconnect the internet no internet ask the company to give you a sim card without internet because what you want your son to call you when he is done with the school to pick you up okay you can find something without internet or very limited internet which means he can browse nothing uh Anyway, I hope today we have a good time and I would like to say to you, thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And uh, I pray that all of you will stay in good health and worth and the Lord will bless you and protect your family, your children's, your health. And remember one thing, be with the Lord so the Lord can be with you. Because the Lord, he says, knock at my door and I will open for you. So many of us, we say that we are Christians, 
but we never knock at the door because many of us are Christians by name. So if you want the protection of the Lord, you have to be in the Lord house. Knock at his door so the, Lord, the door will open and you will be there. The risk is always involved when you are a person trying to fight the world alone. When you have no God with you, the true God, not the false ones. When, the, when our Lord is not with you, you are alone. And trust me, you cannot fight them. The evil is so powerful. And they will come to you from many ways. You kick him out from the door, he will come from the window. He will come to you even in the shape of a priest, in a uniform of a priest. This is how powerful the devil is. He will use someone, he is wearing a cross to deceive you. And there's too many of them. That's why you have to be very careful. Thank you all for being here. And we'll see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a fraud. And I have to go and look for Gog and Magog. I guess they are waiting for me. Take care.